In this video, we're in part two of our Airtable video series. And the point of this video series is to help you keep all of your ideas and your entire video production to marketing process simple and organized. In this video, we're gonna cover creating a table, a separate table, so that we can organize all of those posts that we've created, the video content we've created, and then being able to see what we've used or what we've posted on our website and what content we still have available so that we can plan out when we're gonna post it on our website. Hey, if you're new here and this is the first video you're stumbling upon, I wanna recommend that you go check out video one of this series. Just click the link right up here. I produced the first video of the series so that we could get into Airtable and start to organize our entire video workflow process. It's a simple video. I walk you through step-by-step, step, so check that out right now. My name is Lowell Brown from Going Social, where we make social media marketing simple and easy. Be sure to like and subscribe below so you get notified when the next video of this series comes. And the next video is gonna be all about how we take our videos that we've created and how we organize our social media posts. So this is a big one and I don't want you to miss it. Make sure you subscribe below. You can even leave a comment below and I'll notify you when the next video is published, which will be the following Tuesday. So be sure to check it out then as well. So let's go back to screen mode. I'll pick you up from where we left off and we'll talk about organizing our blog posts. So again, what we covered in the first video of this series was talking about Airtable. We, we created this entire table, which here is our grid view, and we covered everything from our video topic ideas, categorizing them into a status, whether it's an idea, whether they're in production, whether it's published. We've got our topics outlined, the video length, and then we created all these other fields to organize our information from the process of uh, again, of thinking of this idea of what are we going to record as a video to then going into more detail. And I'll open up one of these that I think I have some content in here. And we've gone through everything from, you know, planning out what our title is, putting a thumbnail for our videos in, the date that we published it on YouTube, organizing the description that we used when we posted to YouTube, any tags, the URL, the video length, uh, we've got check boxes for when we've posted on YouTube, all our social media stuff. So we we basically created everything that we we need. And, and sometimes I do revise this after as I start using this tool more and more. So I do urge you to customize whatever I show you here based on your own workflow, your own process, and as you see fit. Then in the next part, what we did was we took from this original grid view which was where we created all the fields and we just have it in one long table. Then we created our actual YouTube video planner. And this is where now we're grouping content into the categories of idea, in production and published. So this will help us keep our, our topics and our videos organized better. We're also sorting them by publish date, YouTube publish date. So that's down here in the bottom. So we're first grouping them by our status and then we were organizing them. And we've also elected on this view to actually hide some fields because we don't need to see everything. And again, this is something that I, I work through and I always do change. So in this case, what I'm looking at here are to identify the videos I've published, what categorize, uh, what categories or what topics I've covered, if they're long or short and the date. This helps me because I know, okay, well, I've published these and this is what I did recently. These are what I'm working on. So maybe these ones are gonna go next, but then when I'm looking at where I'm at on the idea stage, I can decide which one do I wanna record next based on what I've already done, the timeline, the length I wanna do, that kind of thing. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna create another grid view here. So we're gonna open this one and we're gonna call this one blog publishing and we're just gonna create it as that. So what we need to do here when we're on this view is we need to filter these out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a condition. Now, 
The cool thing about this is it's almost like doing those if and or if that statement. So we're going to go by status and we're going to filter by anything that's an idea. Also going to add a condition and where status is not. So we want to filter out the two statuses of idea and in progress. So what we want to really see only on this view is all the published content. So again, think of it this way. We're not going to post a blog post on a video that we haven't yet published. The content isn't created yet. So what we want to do is we want to filter out all of the other stuff, the videos that are in idea phase or in production. We just want to see what's published. So that's what we've done now. We're going to group by and we're going to see all fields because we don't have it here and where the checkbox is website. Okay. So what you see now is that it's actually grouped them. So I know that these videos that are published have been posted to my blog already and those that aren't. The next thing I want to do is I need to sort this. I need to sort these fields in a better way. So we're going to sort it by publish date. So now what I want to do is I want to adjust these columns again, just to make everything that I see here a little bit more organized for myself. Let's leave that there. We've got published, we've got topic. We can shorten that up. We've got the video length, which is great. Now, again, what I usually do here is I'll remove a couple things. So let's hide some fields here. I don't really need to see priority. So let's get rid of that. What I do want to see is if it's posted to the website. So I want that checkbox here. So let's move this one over. So we've got that. And then the publish date for our blog. We're going to do that. Okay. And then the next thing. So a lot of this stuff is all the way at the end here. So blog title, we can move over. And then let's just close these up a little bit. So it's easier to see stuff. Now you can also hide this bar if you don't really want to see it just to clear space. So sometimes I do that as well. Again, just clicking view here at the top can open it up or close it. And again, it does kind of give you a mouse over so you can still get at these that that little side menu if you need to. So we've got blog title and then let's move the blog summary text over. Now, what you can also do here that sometimes is helpful is adjust the height of each of these rows. So you do that by clicking here, row height. And then what I do sometimes is I'll make it a little bit tall just because it makes it a little bit easier to see more of the content. So if I'm looking at the blog summary text here, I can just kind of look at what I've written out already. And that tends to help me sometimes now. Also blog thumbnail again, just making sure that we've got everything ready. It does help to have this stuff sorted and then I'll get into the YouTube publish date and I'll also sometimes what I like to do is have the video time just so I can see. Sometimes I like to balance out what I'm posting in terms of, you know, if it's shorter post or a longer post. Um, and then we can look at what else we want to move around here or adjust. So we don't need again, we can hide some of these fields. We're not going to need the video flow. We're not going to need thumbnail text. Okay, so now I've hidden more fields. The reason why I leave some of these available on this view is just to help me with the planning process a little bit. Let's say I want to post one of these as a blog post now. So what I can do is I can start to get everything ready and, and I do usually try to do this in batch. So again, looking at this, we've got three, we've got three blogs now. And what I can do is I can actually plan to schedule them. 
in advance, okay? And this is what I do for myself sometimes when I've got all my videos and I've got these content that's building up, then I can kind of plan them out. So let's just take this one as an example. So we've got how to create a photo slideshow. Now you'll notice that this view is now adjusted based on the order that we just created all those columns in. So it does make entering this stuff a little bit easier. So if I checked off this right now, which is that it's posted to my website, you'll see what happens here. So as soon as I click this, it automatically goes down to being posted on the website. So we don't want to do that yet because I haven't done that. And, and I only select this once it's actually published to the website. Um, what I will do here is I'll add a date. So if you double click, you can just put that date. So let's say that I wanted to post it a week from today, then I can schedule that out. And then this one I can say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make it in two weeks. And then you see how it's organizing this stuff for me. And then this one, I want to be in there. So now this list is being organized for me and I've adjusted that. Now I can start to fill in the rest of the information. So let's say blog title. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually take the video title. This looks like a good one. And again, I can go through here and I can just start to format it a little bit cleaner so that when I am ready to actually post it on my blog, it's all ready to go. So if I was writing text here, usually I'll take part of the video description from YouTube and I'll use that as the blog post. Sometimes I'll actually take the entire transcript and that's why you'll see here that I left that transcript file field because sometimes I will want to know, okay, well, let me find that transcript file or I'll download it from here if I can't remember where on my computer it is. And I'll use that text to help me write out the blog summary text or the actual blog post text. So what I have here is the summary text is really that blog post text. Sometimes what you can also do if I, if I, I don't have this here, but what I, what I should add here as well is when you post a blog, sometimes you're going to want to think of um, the SEO title or the SEO description. So those are additional fields that I might and probably will add here so that I can do that and, and add that to my process in the future. I usually just adjust it as I'm going along when I'm actually in the process of publishing. So that's just to give you an example of some, some copy that we might use on the blog post. If I had a blog image thumbnail available and ready to go, I could upload that here. The video time will just allow me to know the length of this post and, or the, the video, the, the idea of what I'm sharing there. Um, the playlist, so we can just say it was on Canva. And then that's pretty much it. So again, now when I'm ready to actually post it on my website, I, all I have to do is come in here and see, okay, well, this one is next. So I can take all the information again, I can go up and I can grab the blog title, put that into my WordPress website. I can grab the copy, post it there. So the idea is just to make the process really easy for you so that when you are ready to actually post these as blogs, everything is organized. You know what you're going to post, when you're going to post it, all of the details and information that you need to get it posted on your website is ready in front of you. It's just going to save you a ton of time. So you don't have to sit there and try to write all this stuff up. It's there. Everything's ready to go. Your blog thumbnail image, all the text, every piece of information you need. And again, whether you're the one that's actually taking your content and posting it on your website or whether you have someone else on your team or a contractor, somebody helping you with this, it, everything is organized. So it's really simple, ready to go. And you, you can just say, okay, here's the order. I want these next five posts or however many you have, I want them all posted or scheduled to go out in my blog. It's really easy to get that all done in a short amount of time because it's all organized. So that's it, pretty simple, right? So what we've done is we've taken our table that had all of our information about our YouTube videos. We created another view. We called it our blog publishing tool. We adjusted some fields. We adjusted how we're gonna sort that information. 
we've added a couple fields where we needed to, and we've made the process of organizing all of this information simple and easy. The point is make your workflow process simple and easy. Save time, have everything organized and ready to go. So when you want to get those blog posts scheduled or post them to your website, it's all there ready for you to go. So I hope this video was helpful. Stay tuned for the next video, video three in this series, where we're gonna cover everything about organizing that video content and organizing it for your social media. We're gonna create a social media post planner from our YouTube video content. And be sure, again, to like and subscribe below so that you get notified of the next videos in the series. If you found this video helpful, please post a comment below. If you have any questions at all, that's also the perfect place to write a comment and I'll be sure to reply to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out video series one if you need a recap of how to get things started in Airtable. Again, my name is Lowell Brown from Going Social, where we make social media and digital marketing efforts simple and easy. I'll see you in the next video.